hi guys welcome back to the channel or if you're new here welcome to the channel i feel like if you already clicked this video you already know what it is though we are just continuing our journey of watching never have i ever season four saying season four is still so crazy i can't believe i've been doing this since season one let me not act like i'm not having fun here in this video we're going to be watching episodes three through five if you haven't watched one through two yet maybe check that video out it'll be up here in the info somewhere if you get to the end of the video and you like it or you've already seen my face and you already so familiar with the channel that you just already know you're gonna like the video just go ahead and like it that'd be really awesome and then if you want to subscribe subscribe to the channel but before we get into the video i just had to cut in and let you guys know that when i filmed this initial commentary i was supposed to do episodes three four and five obviously because that's what the thumbnail says but i totally skipped over episode three and just went right into episode four don't ask me how i didn't notice it just happened so i thought it'd be best to come on here with a voice memo so i can do a recap so nobody's left in the dark and you know the rest of the episodes obviously make sense i am so sorry about this i don't know how i skipped episode three but you know stuff happens but anyway enough talking let's get into the voice memo commentary of episode three we start off episode three with a bang no pun intended because davy has a sex dream about ethan which is actually so weird because i had a dream about michael simino the other night it wasn't a freaky deaky sex dream like davy's was mine was very much a normal dream anyway this is a huge no-no obviously because Davy knows that Eleanor has a thing for Ethan so her having a sex dream about him is kind of breaking girl code. The next plot point in this episode is that Davy's stairs has termites so the stairs are broken so Davy's grandma calls a contractor to fix it before Melanie can and that contractor ends up being Margot's dad which is obviously so awkward because their kids are beefing each other so by association the parents are beefing too so they don't like each other and now he's going to be all up in the house fixing her stairs. Paxton has his first day as the assistant swim coach. He was only at ASU for two weeks so is giving giving up. Davey basically tells him that and says maybe he should have given it more time before giving up and that offends Paxton and it makes him feel like a loser which if you ask me he is but college isn't for everyone so I'm not gonna judge but coming back to your old high school guy maybe try a different school I don't know. Going back to the whole Davey Eleanor Ethan love triangle situation Davey encourages Eleanor to ask Ethan out because she thinks that if they are boyfriend and girlfriend this will stop her from fantasizing about him because she would be breaking girl code and she definitely doesn't want to do that moving on to ben he is still giving davy the silent treatment do we really care no but obviously davy does care because she's all like even when we hated each other we were still talking the silent treatment is worse than when they were fighting blah 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 blah. there is a new substitute teacher at the school and she is so cute and pretty by the way she's there because davy had sent the other ap lit teacher to the hospital if you remember from episode one she was fighting with ben and being so vulgar that she caused her teacher to collapse and be sent to the hospital circling back to the whole termite stair margot dad contractor situation margot's dad ends up removing the entire staircase at davy's house because it turns out the stairs had a whole infestation problem but none of thinks that they're trying to milk her for money but we come to find out that this isn't the case he leaves them without stairs for five days guys so he's basically gutted the stairs and hasn't come back in five days so none wants to go and confront him and he admits that he was going to come back but he wanted to be spiteful you know after the thing between margot and davy so he was just gonna leave her without stairs for a while but you know as they're arguing they slowly start to find that they have more in common than they initially thought they find sympathy for each other when margot's dad finds out that nalani is a widow and nalani finds out that margot's dad's wife left him for another man which is so crazy because have you seen him why would she take off with someone else some people just don't know when they have it good but i think i should stop calling margot's dad margot's dad and call him by his real name which is Andres. Now the episode is starting to get a little bit juicier because Ethan decides to throw a party and of course Paxton is at this party because he has absolutely nothing better to do. He thinks he's the man because you know the students are calling him a legend but he's definitely not a legend. He's definitely a loser. He just doesn't know it yet. Moving away from Paxton and to something more interesting. Ethan is all over Davy at this party like he wants her so bad but you know obviously Davy's trying to ignore him because she knows that Eleanor has feelings for him but eventually she succumbs to her feelings which girl i don't blame you i replayed the scenes with him from this party like 15 times i'm so sorry michael Simino, sexiest man alive should definitely be gracing gq covers like that is a handsome boy if i ever get the chance just know it won't be wasted but anyway enough about that let me get back to the plot of the show they kiss but eleanor sees obviously because plot and then we come to find out that eleanor is so upset because ethan had just kissed eleanor right before that but they didn't show us that which i thought was quite 
question mark, question mark, question mark. Like, I feel like they should have showed us that. It doesn't matter. The main point is that they all promised to stay away from him and to not fight over him because he's just not worth their friendship. So it's been some days since the party and Davey's done a pretty good job of avoiding Ethan, but he ends up approaching her at school and basically asks her, you know, to come watch him skate. That he'll do some tricks for her, which I thought was yuck. Like, why would I sit and watch you do skateboard tricks? Actually, let me not say that because if I was in high school and a guy I liked asked me to watch him do skateboarding tricks, I would definitely watch. And also, let me not act like I'm not on Nico Haraga's Instagram watching him do skateboard tricks like I give a damn. It's just because he's hot. Okay, yeah, Davey, you're valid. So yes, Davey decides to go and watch Ethan during lunch break and watch him do skateboarding tricks. But she bumps into Eleanor and realizes Eleanor is there for the same reason as her when they both agreed that they would leave that man alone. So they're fighting, fighting, fighting about, you know, the party, the kissing debacle. And Trent overhears that Eleanor had kissed Ethan at the party and he is heartbroken. Justice for Trent. He's a good man. He's a little bit not all the way upstairs, but Eleanor, please stop breaking his heart because you're breaking mine too. But when Eleanor realizes that Trent is so upset, she realizes that she was really only obsessing over Ethan because she missed Trent. So she goes ahead and gives Davy her blessing and says that Davy can go for Ethan. Now we are nearing the end of the episode and we are back to Paxton. As he is leaving the school, he overhears the Hot Pockets calling him pathetic and loser because they thought he was only back for the weekend. That's why at the party they were, you know, gassing him up, calling him a legend because they didn't know he was going to be staying at the school permanently as an assistant coach. So, you know, Pax is all down in the dumps about that. Then we go back to the more important part of the episode and that is Ethan and Davy. Ethan is waiting on Davy's car and he's looking so scrumdedly umptious. They basically admit to each other that they like each other and Ethan asks Davy to hang out and Davy Davey asks him, well, you can't be kissing other girls. Like, I only want you to kiss me. And so he agrees. I don't know why I found this part so, like, sexy. He was like, you know, I just got a little bit greedy. But I don't know. I was just like, ah, greedy? What? But <laughs> yeah, that's the end of the episode. That's the end of my recap. On to episode four. After a truly humiliating start to senior year, Davy was finally hitting her stride. She was Ooh, about to okay. apply early to Princeton. Oh, I'm not a fan of PDA. So actually, this is a lot. I'm gonna go play the Wordle while the next scene illustrates said skills. Oh, we've come a long way from a season one. In her house. We're gonna be home alone for hours. She's and crazy. I was thinking maybe we could. She's an expert now. Oh, my bad. Girls have sex one time. No, I'm saying. Today was the college fair, baby. She would finally be face to face with the admissions officer who would decide whether she got into Princeton. I hope she gets into Princeton, but the way Davy's her biggest enemy, I feel like she's going to get in her own way. Oh, you really know he doesn't care about his life. She owes at 9 a.m. in the morning. It's crazy. I like your outfit. You look like a little business lady. You wanna go to the supply closet and boss me around later? I can't. I have the college fair. And hey, maybe you should pick that trash up. There's a difference between a bad boy and a litterer. Him littering would have been a major like Ugh, for me. That's just plain disrespect and disregard for everything. I can't stand it. It's horrible. But he's Michael Cimino, so... Parents don't usually attend these college check-ins. I know, but it's a big decision, so I thought we could all tackle it together as a team. She doesn't trust her daughter. She's gonna pressure Fabiola into going to a certain school. I just know it. Oh, well, I can't do Princeton. That's Davy school. Davy would kill me if I messed with her shot. Especially when she called dibs on Princeton in, like, the first grade. You can't call dibs on a college. That's very childish. But then again, they are supposed to be children. I expect you to look at all of these schools at the college fair, including Princeton. Mom, I said including Princeton. Fabiola is not gonna miss out because she didn't go to Princeton. There are so many other schools with so many opportunities. Is it that big of a deal if she looks away from Princeton? But then at the same time, you don't know what Princeton could offer her. She could be shutting the door on this amazing opportunity before she's even seen it again. Andres is still working on the house. Didn't you already have him fix the stairs and then redo the garage? What do you want me to do? I mean, the house needs to be updated, right? Kamala just has nothing interesting going on this season and it was kind of like that for season no it wasn't like that for season three that's a lie they've kind of put common on the back burner i'm not complaining there's a lot of characters so you gotta condense where you can the rest of the teachers are out day drinking while we chaperone this mayhem congratulations on officially being real low status speak for yourself i'm not low status so the way for the writers to get paxton back in the picture was to make him the assistant swim coach i don't really appreciate them trying to bring paxton back into the storyline like he graduated, let it be done. We had closure. Why is he back? Paxton was feeling a little insecure ever since he overheard the new Hot Pocket calling him pathetic. Hey, guess what? I uh, I just talked to the ASU rep for like five seconds, so I basically went there as long as you did. 
Damn. Because he really didn't make it at ASU that long. But hey, seriously though, college is not for everybody. Go when you're ready. But coming back to your old high school is kind of like... Uh... I think you should make the choice. <laughs> Indian. Big up, Scott. Oh. Hi, um, there's a line. I'm Davy Vishu Kumar, and oh. here's why Princeton needs a girl like me. Davy, that's so wrong. She was gonna meet every person. Yeah, you're still gonna need to wait in line. Okay, uh, how about the elevator pitch? I mean, all AP classes include two languages. I have well over 4.0 GPA. So that's great, Davy. Thanks for stopping by. Is that it? You don't want to ask any questions about myself? Go no, because you jumped in front of everyone. That's so rude. Uh, on second thought. I am gonna go to the back of the line, and maybe we could start over when I get to you. Not necessary. Have a great day. Wow. And all she had to do was wait in line. Oh, she's a silly, silly child. But this would be a very high pressure, intense day for these students. This is everything to them. This is everything they've worked up for their entire life. <sighs> Yo, Davey, what are you doing? Aren't you supposed to be at your dork conference? I hate the word dork, and why do people still write that in teen shows? No one says dork. Here's what you have to do. So you follow her to her car, and then when she starts to back up, you let her run you over just a little bit, and then she'll feel bad and give you whatever you want. I, I'm not saying that's a terrible idea, but it's a good way of opening the door. Oh no, what's this beautiful bonehead about to do? I'm Ethan. Davey's boyfriend, and I just wanted to emphasize what a sick student she is. Oh gosh. I'm just on edge because I don't know how this is going to be ruined because it's going to be ruined. Was Davey's renegade romp partner actually being helpful to her academically? Thank you, Ethan. That was really nice. Don't worry about it. See you later, okay? I can't lie, if I was a college admissions person and I saw how attractive her boyfriend was, I'd be like, okay, you can fool. All right, you're coming to Princeton, girl. Party, how long have I been asleep? About three hours. Len? Where's my grandmother? What's he in? Not Grown Ups, is it? Is he in Grown Ups? He's in something. <laughs> I keep saying that, but he's in one of those things. He even had a sitcom TV show, right? The Goldbergs, that's the one he was in. Daddy Daycare. He was in Wizards of Waverly Place, the Shakira episode. He is just such an interesting casting choice. Why don't you try a version that sounds more like you? Or is more conversational? Margo, criticism is not what I need right now. Don't go. Uh um, it's not a big deal. He could put like a sweater over it. Girl, that was obviously not going to help the situation, obviously. Just put a sweater on top of it. Someone has to have something he can wear. I have an extra shirt. Yeah, hard pass. How is this possibly going to work? All right, you seem like a women's medium. Oh, change clothes. Take off your shirt. Oh. Oh gosh. I don't care for this not one bit. Also, this season is kind of boring me. It doesn't look too bad on him. It's obviously not the shirt she was wearing before because they are not the same size, but. Hi, what's your name? Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm just grabbing a brochure. Wait, are you on the robotics team? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm actually the captain. Is that something you want to study in college? Here we go. Fabiola's gonna take Davy's spot. Well, Princeton has a phenomenal robotics team. This year, they're building a fully functioning BB-8 droid, like from the Force Awakens. See, that's an opportunity Fabiola Fabiola would have missed out on if she just chose to completely ignore Princeton for the sake of friendship and Davy. Friendship is important, but Davy doesn't own Princeton. She can't decide she's the only one in the friend group that can go there. So I'm glad that Fabiola checked it out. I guess we'll see where this goes. I really don't care though. Ethan? Uh oh. Why do you have a Shara's uh -oh. wallet? Because I stole it. You robbed the Princeton rep? Are you insane? She was a and she deserved it for icing you out. Oh no. She needs to break up with him. How could you go into someone's purse and steal their wallet? Because he's a criminal, Davey. He vandalized your car. You're not a bad boy. You're just... Bad, bad person, yeah. There's a difference for sure. Good for you, Davey. Because it takes people a lot longer to figure that out. But he's so sexy. No, I'm kidding. This better not be the last of Michael Cimino in this show. If so, I'm going to be mad. Why are you at my hotel? I have your wallet. I've been looking everywhere for this. Thank you so much. Where did you find it? Funny story. Do not tell her the truth. This could seriously ruin her chances. Why admit this to me? You could have just tossed it in that potted fern over there and run. It felt like the right thing to do. Well, I appreciate your honesty. Okay, maybe that's a good thing. I can't lie, I would have lied. I would have been like, I found it on the ground. Ugh, is Davey gonna get into Princeton or not? It's causing me like secondhand anxiety. They've been talking about it since the first season. Why you look all Fury Road? Try, can I ask you a question? We, am I a loser now? What? Oh. Those little punks used to worship me. Now they're talking straight to my face. Yeah, you're a loser. <laughs> Identity crisis. Somebody peaked in high school. No, he just has to pick himself up. It would be a bit jarring for him, but I still don't feel bad for him. If you want their respect, you have to go in there and make them remember who the alpha is. Oh gosh. This was not necessary screen time. Paxton, I thought we were done with him. He should have stayed at ASU. See bro, I think you forget who you're talking to. 
I have the power of a faculty member. I can make your life miserable. So show some respect. That's even more loserish behavior than anything he's done so far. I don't know. That is ill. <laughs> ill. Ick. Icky. Icky. Yuck. Hello. Whatever, sweetie. I'll call you. What? Was there someone else here? Nope, just good old Len. What is Len up to? And I don't care. Yikes. There's a lot of BS being thrown at me, I feel like. And speaking of future, it was beginning right now for her and all the other kids submitting early decision applications. After all, for dorks like these kids, college is where your life really starts. That's true. And that's why they have identity crises. <laughs> that's why they have an identity crisis when they leave college because they made their whole life about getting into college. They didn't have a life in college and then leave college like whoa, whoa, whoa. we knew fabiola was gonna apply to princeton and she's definitely gonna get in on early decision i feel like and davy won't get in on early decision that's my prediction but we'll see who knows them throwing this fabiola princeton curveball at us is kind of annoying though it's just slightly annoying there are so many schools you could no okay not that i'm seeing davy's side of it in the sense of like princeton is my school but fabiola come on oh it's a bit icky especially not to tell davy she hasn't told davy okay on to season four episode five never have i ever been to new jersey okay they're going on a school trip to new york this will be interesting i like to see these characters kind of outside of that element makes for more fun episodes i did apply somewhere i just don't think that you would be too happy about it i'd be happy for you wherever you decide to apply unless you steal my spot at princeton no i i applied to yale that was the time to be honest but i get it being honest can be hard when davy was a freshman blair kwan was the top senior student at sherman oaks high oh she looks so young there she looks like season one davy how did they do that if you can't handle the pressure then go back to your book davy was determined to follow in her smart as hell footsteps oh this mrs kwan might be a never meet your heroes type situation is that Margot's dad? Oh my gosh, that's Margot's dad. Melanie, you little sneak. We're on the same wavelength. Hey, Margot's dad. I'm pretty sure that Len brought a woman into the house while I was napping. I could have sworn I heard a voice. What did she sound like? I want to see Kylie Minogue. This plotline about Len and the grandma, I could kind of care less. There she was, the myth, the legend. Blair Kwan. I'm so excited to see my mini me. Whoa, Davy, she just said you guys were alike. I'm so nervous about how this is all gonna turn on its head. Because it just always turns on its head for Davy. Oh, I'm aware of your friend's temper. That's why I have a helmet in my office. But you need to prioritize yourself and go see if that school is right for you. True. I'm definitely obviously not on Davy's side in this situation. I think it's just icky because Fabiola didn't tell her, but I 100% understand why Fabiola didn't tell her because it's not like Davy's created an environment where something like that would be easy to bring up. I'm not sure Juilliard is the right place for you, but there are so many ways to be an actor. Look at Flo from Progressive. I bet she's got a second home. Oh. oh, but it's true, Eleanor. Juilliard isn't the only school. Don't let this discourage you, babe. There are so many schools, and you just have to find the right one for you. Oh, but it's tough. But Juilliard, Schmuliard, who cares? Davy was in awe. The Blair she knew in high school had skipped prom to practice extra declensions for AP Latin. That's how it goes. They're so uptight in high school, realize they can have a bit of fun and then start to have fun. I keep anticipating something bad happening, but I just got to watch it and let it come as it comes. Hello, I'm hot. <sighs> Sweet silence. Oh, I know she hasn't had this in a while. She'll be an empty nester soon. Is she gonna feel lonely? It's gonna be a bit unsettling. And she doesn't have a man. She doesn't need it, obviously, but it's gonna get lonely. It's going to. Didn't go to class, but I'm getting schooled on how to party by Blair at her ritzy AF Armstrong Inn. You would love it here. It's gonna seem glamorous and fun at first, but I feel like Davy's gonna get over it. Like, can we go to a class? No, oh, white girl dancing. What the hell are you doing? You're supposed to stay behind the bar. And you're not even oh, wearing your uniform. I just thought I'd be creative to take the drinks to the guests on the you fired. Let's go. Oh. Oh, this is embarrassing. Thing is, I'm actually not a student anymore. Oh my gosh. I knew there was going to be something wrong with that one lady. Why would you ever want to do a puzzle like that? No picture, no scenery, just gradient. That's insane. What happened? Well, it turns out if you party nonstop and fail all your classes, they will not let you stay. I knew it. Girls gone wild that first year of college. Never got to experience anything in high school. They get a bit of freedom, go crazy, and do way too much. And they're burnt out too. And you take all the hardest classes just to get into a school like this. Then once you're in, what's the goal? You're certainly not going to be the top anymore. And you don't have your mom here to badger you. Ooh. And I 
identity crisis. Because if your whole identity is wrapped up into getting to a single school, who are you once you achieve that goal? This is a good lesson for younger people watching this show. I just wanted to say I'm really sorry about giving you a hard time about ASU. Oh. oh, she gave him a hard time? Did I miss something? I definitely missed something. <laughs> Thanks, Davey, I appreciate that. Also, it's pretty nice to get to see your face around school again. It's nice seeing you too. Uh, we're not gonna start this back up. We are not starting this romance back up because I hear the music. I hear the music in the background. And now Michael Cimino's gonna be gone. I didn't know he'd only be here for two, three episodes. I guess you were right. Being home alone is harder than I thought. Oh my goodness, when Devi goes to college next year, what am I gonna do with myself? My parents are empty nesters right now. And I know some friends whose parents are empty nesters and it's tough for those parents. It's harder than they think it's going to be. That house gets real quiet. You've lived with noise for the past 20 odd years, 25, how many ever years it's been. And then all of a sudden it's just quiet, nothing. Your kids are grown up. I can't relate, but I can understand how that would feel a little bit. No thanks, I'm just trying to hang out with my girls. <laughs> Dude, come on, just let me go. Oh, yeah. Get off of her. You okay? Oh. It's not a party scene if someone doesn't get hurt. Am I right? Did you know that Blair filled out? Really? That sucks. Are you really close enough to her to be this sad about it? I think it sucks even more for her because if it can happen to Blair, it can happen to her. She was much more perfect than you when she was in high school. How dare you? That was her problem. She made zero mistakes and had no fun. You have made many mistakes and go to parties and you had boyfriends. Mistakes are good as long as you learn from them. This is right. Living, experiencing. You have to be a person. The earlier you come into your own, I feel like the easier your life will be. You save yourself so much pain. My main goal has to go to Princeton. Like, that's it. I never thought about what life would be like after I got in. And I don't blame you, girl. I don't think anyone really thinks about who they're going to be after the fact. That's how Paxton felt, but more on like a social level. Like he started at the top in high school, then was at the bottom in college and that clearly broke him. So you're Marry him. That's so sweet. She had fixed her relationship with Ben and was hopeful again about her future at Princeton. I'm really sorry you didn't get to see Yale. It's okay, I could just take a virtual tour. Fabiola, she'll get in. Oh, that's the end of the episode, but I like this song. I need to search that song up. Do me a favor, that was cute. Oh, that is the end of us watching episodes three through five. If I'm being honest, you lot, this season is not that it's not doing it for me, but I'm a little bit bored. And it's okay to be bored, but I'm just hoping it picks up at some point. I also thought Michael Cimino was gonna have a much bigger role to play in the show, but he's like out the picture and now Paxton's back. So I'm really upset because I feel like we're back at square one and I had kind of closed the book on Paxton and I felt like his story arc was closed really well and he definitely could have been left at ASU. He just didn't need to be back. It didn't have to be ASU, but he really, in my opinion, did not need to be back. And I don't understand this Len guy. Like, I don't care that the grandma has a new guy that she's seeing. We really don't care. Like, I don't care. And I guess this season is about them closing the chapter. So they can't be doing too many crazy things because there's not enough time in a season to do that. Definitely feels like a wind down from previous seasons. I'll say that. Noticing Davey, does not have as many visions about her dad or as many flashbacks about her dad so that's interesting to see but i hope despite all that you guys are still enjoying the videos i still enjoy watching it you have to remember like i'm not just doing this for a commentary i am actually watching the show so if i'm feeling some type of way about it i'm feeling some type of way but yes that is the end of this video i hope you guys enjoyed it if you liked it give it a thumbs up if you want to subscribe subscribe my name was tesse have a good day night evening whatever it is wherever you are and i will shortly be catching you in the next video peace Going on to Jesus Christ